Windows 10 support ends in just one week. So for everyone that wants to stay on Windows 10, I'm gonna show you how to sign up for the extended security update or the ESU program for free. Now, it's gonna require a Microsoft account, but not like you might think. Stay tuned. So I told you guys a while back, because of my strong desire not to use a Microsoft account, I was probably just gonna pay the $30 for an ESU license. But unfortunately, you still need a Microsoft account even if you pay the 30 bucks. So today I'm gonna show you how to set up ESU for free with a Microsoft account. But first, I gotta pay some bills. So check out today's sponsor. Are you still running Windows 11 unactivated because the license just costs too much? Then you should check out today's sponsor, VIP SCD Key, where you can get a valid Windows 11 license for around $20. Stop dealing with that stupid watermark and actually be able to change your desktop background with a valid license for Windows 11. Just go to the link in the description below and pick up a valid Windows 11 license key. During checkout, use the code CYBERCPU for a 25% discount. Once you have your key, go to your activation settings in Windows 11 and click the link that says change product key. Enter the product key you just purchased and hit activate. Now you don't have to deal with that stupid watermark. And check out the description for deals on not just Windows, but Office 2. Now, on with the video. Extended Security Updates, or ESU, is a program that Microsoft has had for quite some time actually. This is a program that they offer to volume license customers who don't wanna to upgrade to the next version of Windows when the version they're currently using loses support. Now, up to this point, this program has never been offered to the general public, at least until now. It's always been a paid program that extends updates for just three years on each year, the price doubles from the year before. That's kind of an incentive to get volume license customers to move to the new version of Windows because you have to pay for this license for each individual computer. And that can get quite expensive, especially considering the fact that Windows has been offering free updates to the next version of Windows for quite a while. So you can either upgrade to the new version of Windows for completely free or pay for extended security updates, which gets more and more expensive each year. But unfortunately for consumers, it has always been that once support ends, that's it. You just need to upgrade to the next version of Windows. Now, granted, there has always been workarounds in the past for Windows where people have just pirated the ESU program from the volume license service. But now with Windows 10, that's not necessary because Microsoft is offering it to consumers for essentially free. Now it's supposed to cost 30 bucks, but Microsoft gives you the option to get it for free if you do certain things that Microsoft wants you to do. One of those options is enabling Windows Backup. You can also pay for it through the Microsoft Reward Points program, but that entire process looks entirely too complicated to me. But the problem here is that I don't want my system logged in to a Microsoft account, and I don't want to use Windows Backup. But it looks like you may not have to worry about either of those. So let's jump on the system and get to it. Okay, so here we are in Windows 10. Now, the first thing that you're gonna to wanna to do once you decide that you're going to sign up for the ESU program is to make sure to update Windows 10 to the latest version of Windows 10. And to find out if you're on the latest version, go ahead and go into settings, click on system, go down to about, and then on this page, scroll all the way down right here. You can see that I'm on 22H2. Now, you wanna make sure also to just install all of the optional updates, install all the updates available for Windows 10, and at that point you should be ready to sign up for ESU. And to do that, you just go to Update and Security, and you should have a sign up link in Update. However, in some cases you might not. Like as you can see right here, I have the advertisement for Windows 11, 
which this computer obviously meets the system requirements for Windows 11, so that's the version that Microsoft wants me to be running. But if I wanna stay on Windows 10 with ESU, there should be a link either right here or right here, and I'll go ahead and put up on the screen the other version of this screen, just so you can kinda of see what I'm talking about. However, if you don't have it, like as you can see with mine right now, there is a little tweak that you can do in order to get it. You see, Microsoft is rolling ESU out slowly, but most people should have it available. But for whatever reason, if you don't, let me show you how to get it. To do that, we're gonna go ahead and close settings, click on the start button. We're gonna go ahead and type reg edit. And then from there, we're gonna open up the registry editor. Hit yes to the user account control, and you should have the registry editor right here. Now, you're gonna to wanna to go to current user, and then from current user, you wanna to go to software, and then you wanna to go to Microsoft, then from there, you wanna to go to Windows NT. Everything's alphabetical, so just scroll down to Windows NT, then to current version, and then from there, we wanna go into Windows. Right here. And then from here, you should have a registry key that says Consumer ESU. Now, if you don't, it just means that it hasn't been activated on your computer yet, but we can go ahead and do that manually. So just go ahead and right-click on Windows, hit New, and select Key. And then for the name of the key, you want it to say Consumer ESU, and then go ahead and hit enter. Then from there, you wanna go into that registry key, and then in the white area right here, go ahead and right click, hit new, and then you wanna select DWORD 32-bit value. And from there, you wanna put in ESU eligibility, and then go ahead and hit enter. And then in addition to that, you wanna go ahead and right click again, hit new, select a DWORD 32-bit value again. We wanna make one more key. And for this one, it's gonna be ESU eligibility result. Now, once you've created both of those, go ahead and open up the first one, ESU eligibility, and this one you wanna to set to two, and then hit okay. And then for the ESU eligibility result, you wanna go ahead and set this one to one. Now, I'll go ahead and put up on the screen right now what all the different options are for this. So there, there's many different options that you can go through. For instance, in the ESU eligibility, zero simply means unknown or the feature is not enabled. For number one, it means you're ineligible. For number two, it means you're eligible, just like we said it here. And then for three, you have device enrolled. And five, you have MSA enrolled. And for eight, you have login with primary account to enroll. And then as you can see from the list on the screen right now, you can see what the eligibility result is. I'm not gonna go through every one, but you get the idea. If you set it to eligibility to two and eligibility results to one, you should be ready to go. And to confirm that, all you have to do is go ahead and close the registry editor. Go ahead and open up settings again. Click on update and security. And as you can see, we have enroll now for ESU. Okay, so now you should have the option to enroll in ESU if you didn't have it before. Most systems shouldn't have to go through this step, however. I think it takes a while for the option to become available, but I think it's probably available for most people by now. Because honestly, on this system right here, the enroll option was available and I didn't have to do any of this to use it. In fact, I had to figure out how to reverse engineer the entire enabling process just to disable it on this computer here so I could show you guys how to enable it in the video. In fact, I had to disable it twice just before hitting record to start this video. So it should be enabled on most people's computers. But now that we have it enabled, let's jump back on the system real quick and I'll show you how to enroll the system into the program. Okay, so here we are, and all we have to do to enroll is just go ahead and click Enroll Now, and then it's gonna come up with this screen right here that asks you if you wanna enroll in the extended security updates to stay protected. Go ahead and hit Next, and then from there, it's gonna ask you for your Microsoft account. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. Hit Next, and then it's gonna ask you how you wanna log on. I'm gonna go ahead and use a password. Hopefully I remember my password. Clearly I don't. Okay, let's try one more. This is one of the downsides to not using a Microsoft account all the time. Yeah, I can't remember it. So, okay, we're gonna go ahead and use email me instead. And it's gonna email me a code. So hang on one second while I go to another computer to get that code. All right. 
Hopefully this time it will work, and there we go. So at the next step, once you get logged on, it's gonna say that you have sec sec extended security updates valid until October 13th, 2026 at no extra cost. Now, I'm not sure why it's doing this, but it has never even offered me the ability to pay $30. It's using the Windows backup exception in order to offer me free security updates. And I've even tried creating a new account in order to see if it at least give me the option to pay for it. And it doesn't, it just allows it for free, just like that. So we can go ahead and click add to device. It'll go ahead and enroll it into ESU. And if we click done, that's it. We're literally done. And as you can see right now, it says right here, your PC is enrolled to get extended security updates. And if we go home and then we go over to accounts, as you can see in the accounts, I am logged into a Microsoft account. So from here, we'll click on stop signing into all Microsoft apps and accounts. And then from that point, it should have our system in a local account. And then just to double check, we'll click on home, click on Windows update, and you'll see the computer is still enrolled to get extended security updates. So I've tested this multiple times on multiple systems, and each time I did, it made me log in with a Microsoft account, but it didn't require me to enable backup or anything else. It just worked for free. I've even created a new Microsoft account that I've never used before and got those same results. So it looks like Microsoft is just offering ESU to free for everyone. Cause like I said, I couldn't even find a place where I could give them $30 for it. But I do know that Microsoft has announced recently that people in Europe are going to be receiving ESU for free without doing anything. Maybe they're just doing that for people in America too. I don't know, but that's the way it worked for me. Let me know down in the comments if that worked for you too. Also, you only need to log into your Microsoft account to enroll the system itself into ESU. You don't need to use a Microsoft account on the system itself that ESU is enrolled on. It will stay enrolled even after removing the Microsoft account from your system. Most of my testing was done on two separate systems that I had on my workbench. Those systems were reinstalled several times and I tested this process several times over with different Microsoft accounts and different ways of enabling and disabling ESU. Now, one downside that I did notice while doing this is that the system is only enrolled in ESU with the install it currently has. So if you reinstall Windows, you'll have to go through the enrollment process again. But like I said, it's free, so it shouldn't really affect you that much, especially if you use the same Microsoft account to do it. But that's simply going to entail you logging back in, like I said, with your Microsoft account to enable ESU, and then that's it, it just works. But now that you have ESU enabled, you should continue to receive Windows updates for at least another year. But ultimately, this is just kind of delaying the inevitable. We don't know if Microsoft is gonna extend consumer ESU for the three years that volume license gets, but eventually you are going to have to install Windows 11. So if you have a system that has unsupported hardware, it's not that hard to bypass the hardware requirements to install Windows 11. I've shown how to do it lots of times. In fact, if you wanna do that, then check out this video here where I go through the easy way to upgrade your existing Windows 10 to Windows 11 on unsupported hardware. As always, you guys have a great day.